If you find yourself often zoning out or feeling detached from the present moment, and you want to learn more about dissociation, zoning out, daydreaming, and the potential links to ADHD, and how to improve your ability to stay focused in the present moment, then congratulations, because those are the exact topics for today's video. In previous videos, we've discussed ADHD brain freeze and the causes of ADHD. Today, we're discussing the link between dissociation, zoning out, and ADHD. We'll talk about what dissociation is, if there's a link to ADHD, and what the solutions are to zoning out and dissociation. I'm Dante, registered psychologist. Citations are in the YouTube description, and let's begin. Dissociation is a phenomena that for some can feel really scary, or for other people, oddly comforting. It's something that when it does happen, it will often be when people are in a stressful situation, and it involves disconnecting from your thoughts, feelings, memories, and sensations. This might show up as feeling numb, or like things around you aren't real, as though your emotions just aren't real, or like you're mentally checked out. For some people, dissociation feels like being mildly detached, where you watch your experiences from a distance, almost like a spectator, rather than actually feeling and living them. Or sometimes dissociation can mean getting absorbed into one element of the world around you, thereby becoming disconnected from everything else that you could be thinking or feeling. At its more extreme, dissociation can involve a complete disconnect from your experience with the world. This may even lead to things like memory gaps, where you can't even recall things that have just happened. It's believed that dissociation most commonly starts as a survival strategy. It can be a brain's mechanism and response to a traumatic event. If you're ever stuck in an extremely dangerous or stressful situation, and there's no remedy and there's no way to escape, your brain might mentally clock out to avoid the impacts of whatever is actually happening. Over time, if dissociation is used repeatedly to deal with stress, it can become a habit. It can become your brain's go-to method for dealing with challenges, even when the situations aren't as severe anymore. But before we talk about the link between dissociation, ADHD, and zoning out, we need to talk about how dissociation is different to zoning out. It's easy to confuse zoning out with dissociation because they can seem very similar at first glance, but they're actually quite unique. Zoning out is something that all of us do from time to time. It's that feeling when your mind drifts off and you catch yourself just staring out the window or you realize you've lost track of what someone's saying to you in a conversation. It usually happens when you're bored or tired or just daydreaming and the experience normally only lasts a few seconds. And zoning out is often neutral or even relaxing. It's like your brain is just taking a really quick break. Zoning out is also often harmless, with some rare exceptions of people who feel like they're constantly zoning out and it's beginning to impact their ability to perform at work, at school, or to engage with people socially. Dissociation, on the other hand, is more intense and is often tied to stress and trauma. Dissociation goes beyond simple mind wandering. It's a deeper sense of disconnection from yourself and from your surroundings. You might feel numb or detached, like you're not really there. The world around you might feel strange or unreal, or you might lose touch with your emotions or your memories or even parts of your identity. And it gets extremely impactful if dissociation becomes a regular feature of your life. If you're constantly detaching from reality, your work, your relationships, and your ability to perform are all going to be negatively impacted. Another key difference between zoning out and dissociation is duration. While zoning out is brief and easy to snap out of, for example, someone waving their hand in front of your face can bring you back. Dissociation can last much longer, from minutes to hours to even days in extreme cases. Dissociation can also be quite frightening, especially if you don't know what's going on or why you're disconnecting. It's not just a mental pause. It can feel like losing control of your sense of self or sense of reality. In short, zoning out is a common, often harmless, often relaxing experience. While on the other hand, dissociation is a more serious response to stress or trauma, and it can feel disorienting and scary. Both might look similar on the surface, but the feelings and impacts are very different. So is there actually a link between zoning out, dissociation, and ADHD? A big part of this is that zoning out is actually a very common symptom among people with ADHD, especially the people with the inattentive presentation. For people with ADHD, zoning out can happen a lot, making it hard to keep track of conversations, keep track of their work, or even their own thoughts. Dissociation, on the other hand, isn't a symptom of ADHD. It's a response to stress and a response to trauma. But here's where it gets interesting. People with ADHD are at a higher risk of experiencing psychological trauma when you compare them to the general population. Therefore, because of this increased risk to experiencing trauma, 
People with ADHD are also more likely to experience dissociation. But it's important to note that they are not dissociating because they have ADHD. Having ADHD increases the chance that a person has an experience that leads to trauma, and having a trauma increases the chance that the person experiences dissociation. Before we get to talking about what to do about zoning out and dissociation, just remember the key takeaway. While zoning out is a common part and basically a diagnostic feature of ADHD, dissociation is not. Dissociation is a response to stress and trauma. For some people with ADHD, both might certainly show up in their life. And while the data isn't exactly what I would call conclusive yet, I would hypothesize that people with ADHD are more likely than people without ADHD to have experienced dissociation and to experience regular dissociation. So what can you actually do if you want to take control of your tendencies to zone out or to dissociate? If you want to stop zoning out, step one is to actually make sure that you're physically healthy. Things like diet, sleep, and exercise play a big role, so make sure that those are taken care of. It's also a good idea to get your blood work done and get a full physical to rule out any underlying health conditions. If everything checks out, then the next step is to work on building present moment awareness. Mindfulness training can be incredibly helpful for this. And no, mindfulness isn't about clearing your head or becoming one with the Buddha. It's about improving your ability to tell where your attention is pointed towards moment by moment and developing the ability to choose where your attention is going rather than your autopilot brain making those choices for you and putting you into zoned out states. You can definitely train mindfulness on your own, but working with a teacher like a mindfulness coach or a psychologist is honestly just gonna make the process quicker, easier, and more likely to kind of do it right. Stopping dissociation is a little bit more complicated, not in the least of which because dissociation, especially if it's formed as a habit and a pattern, is a response to a long-standing series of stresses and traumas. If dissociation has become your brain's go-to coping mechanism, the first step is to develop new ways of handling stressful situations. You need to replace one habit with a new habit. Before you stop relying on dissociation, you need something else to take its place. This is where individual needs really come into play. Different strategies are just gonna work for different people. So it's often best to explore various options with a trained professional. Therapies like Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, DBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, CBT, Acceptance and Commitment Therapy, ACT, can be particularly helpful because they focus on practical coping skills. In addition to this, mindfulness and present moment awareness practices are also gonna be helpful. They can be especially useful for noticing the early signs of dissociation before it fully rears its head and takes over, and this gives you an opportunity to pause and ground yourself out before you dissociate fully. Both zoning out and dissociation require different approaches, but building present moment awareness is a key similarity to help you gain control over both experiences. And once you've learned some skills that can help, you really wanna practice them and make them into a habit. Greater control over your attention and more adaptive and helpful responses to stressful situations that's gonna help your relationship, it's gonna help your work, your performance, and it's gonna allow you to put your attention into those moments of life that you actually enjoy, so you're not zoning out from those as well. Now, if you're someone with ADHD, you might have other problems in your life as well, such as ADHD brain freeze. Or if you're struggling with controlling your emotions more generally, that's gonna be impactful as well. I've got videos on both those topics on my YouTube channel. 